talk about prompt engineering, right? Probably one of the most overused um, kind of terms in the AI space right now. You're seeing a lot of grifty marketers uh, pushing prompt engineering, right? Or, or prompt engineering, pushing like a bunch of prompts, right? Get my thousand prompts, right? It's going to change your life. Um, I, there is some merit to it. I used to, I used to kind of uh, find it pretty shady. I mentioned this a couple of videos ago, but I used to find it kind of shady, but there is some merit to uh, selling prompts and buying prompts. Um, there is an engineering aspect to it, right? Like if you were to try to tell a computer or build software, tell a computer what to do, you have to do software engineering, right? Which is essentially just writing um, exactly what you want in a different language. So prompt engineering is just writing prompts, which is telling the computer or the system what to do. Uh, you're just using uh, English, right? Um, and we all know that, you know, if you're better at speaking and reading English, uh, you're probably better at asking questions, right? Or trying to extract the answer that you need whenever you need it, right? You usually get better results if you're better at um, reading and writing and asking the right questions, essentially. So there's some engineering to it. Anybody who can speak uh, a language um, isn't necessarily an elite prompt engineer, uh, which is what I used to think, but um, it's nothing crazy, right? And we have templates to work off that and everything. But what, what I'm going to show you here first is uh, our calendar tool in action and the prompt that we use for it, right? So when I show you our template, it's, it's for this tool exactly, right? Um, I am going to make a quick note before I run this. There's, I'm, I'm troubleshooting some issues right now with the AI agents. I wouldn't call them issues, but kind of troubleshooting how to make this process a lot more streamlined, optimized, more cost efficient in general. It's not too expensive either way, but um, I, I think if the agents can do more on their end to, you know, generate the correct output that we need, uh, as opposed to creating having a node here that kind of handles the entire tool itself, it might be a little bit more efficient. You'll get into what I'm talking, you'll see what I'm talking about a little bit later. Um, but the way that we run it now works perfectly fine for us. Um, the costs aren't crazy at all. Uh, and it's pretty reliable. So let me kind of show you what we're going to run really quick. So we're going to run this prompt right here. So assume that this, like I have a personal agent and it has access to my calendar and I kind of just want to tell it to do things for me, right? And one of those things is managing my calendar and creating meetings and whatnot. So um, as an example here, we're going to do create a meeting for Thursday at 5 p.m. and add Andrew Lewis to it. Okay, great. So obviously it, it has to know, right, what Andrew Lewis's email is, um, when Thursday at 5 p.m. is, right? Because we're using OpenAI's model, GP24 four model. It's only been trained up to 2023, 20, right? So it doesn't know day and time. So we've got to figure that out for it or help it figure it out itself, right? Um, but let's run it. Let's just run it. So we're going to do test workflow. It's going to go through the AI node. It's going to check the vector store, the database to grab Andrew's email. It's going to go to the switch function here, which is going to identify exactly which action we need to take, right? create an event, delete an event, get an event, get many events, update an event, right? It obviously chose create an event, it created the event. And then we have this last node here, which is a set node, which uh, is for the agent itself. So the agents can only receive uh, input from the tool or output from the tool uh, if, if the field name is response, right? So let's look in here. So the event was created, we go to the set node and all I'm doing is taking the key information that is outputted after the event is created and putting it here in the set node and then naming it response, right? So if I were to run this through my agent, it would it would run and then the agent would receive this response right, right here. Success, title, description, start, and, and then the link to the thing, right? So like you would obviously get the link to the uh, event itself, right? So let's actually look at it in calendar blurred out everything um calendars getting packed but we have some space here where the meeting was created right 5 p.m thursday and we added andrew lewis and we have the correct email for him please don't go and spam him um, but yeah the the meeting was created just as expected right so i kind of just wanted to show that because you know imagine that you said something else imagine you said like um you know uh send Andrew uh, an email asking if he has finished the uh, project proposal for our call with John on Friday and schedule a meeting with him 30 minutes before the call with John and, and call it like team sync, right? Um, 
So th in, in that case, like we're obviously the agent is calling the email actions tool, and then it has to extract from the user's message. Like that entire message would be sent to this tool. It would have to extract exactly what it needs to do right from there. So like it would read the message and it would say, okay, I don't need to worry about email. All I need to do is actually create the event that's 30 minutes before the meeting with John. Right. Um, and so it's as simple as that. I think there are more efficient ways to doing that, uh, to, to like working with these tools, but, um, this is the way that we do it and it works perfectly fine. Right. So let's go into the AI node. Obviously you see chat input. That's what I said. And then we have this system prompt here, which is telling the agent exactly what to do. And you can see we have objective, we have context, we have all the parameters that we need. Like we need the output to be specific. You could see the output here It output it in a JSON package. It added the attendees. It had the start date. Um, it just called it meeting cause it didn't know, you know, cause I didn't say exactly what to call it. Um, so it just said meeting. Um, but you can see we have a lot of detail in our prompts. And then for the date and time, we have a separate prompt. I mean, it's, 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 it's all going to end up being the same to the AI, but for me, it's separate. Um, you know, I say calculate date and time using the current date and time. Here's the current date and time. And I just use this uh, command, right. To just say like this, it's now, right now. Um, that seems to be working great in terms of calculating the correct date and time, and then having it output the start date and the, uh, the end date and time. Right. And then we obviously have the chat input. So we pull that in as an expression and the role is user. So it knows it's coming from the user. Uh, and then the output content as JSON, we always click that on and simplify output is on by default, but we don't really do anything there. Usually when it comes to the AI nodes, we don't really, um, say like, don't simplify the output. Right. Um, so yeah, that's how that's looking at the prompt in action. Essentially these prompts here are just output prompts to make sure that, um, the parameters are being uploaded properly. Right. Cause like if you need to delete an event, you need to grab the event ID. So the first thing that happens is getting the event ID and then, uh, you know, getting a bunch of event IDs. Usually like if, if the user is like, can you cancel my, my, uh, cancel all my meetings for Friday. Right. So we need to get all the events from Friday and then we need to get the event IDs and then go and delete them. Right. So anyway, a lot of these here are just like getting the event IDs that we need to then go and input them into the next node for the action that we're taking. Right. So let's actually get into explaining how we design our prompts. So we got the classic deck set up here. Um, and we're going to talk about prompt engineering for AI agents. We're going to cover what is prompt engineering. We're going to cover, um, our prop prompt formula that's, that's been working great for us. We're, and then I'm going to show you a custom GPT that'll just, that I created that will just create the prompts for you. Um, so maybe this is all pointless. You could just use the, the, uh, the custom GPT. So anyway, what is prompt engineering? It's basically just telling the agent what to do, what to do, who it is and how to do it. Right. Super, super simple. I think it makes sense. Right. Just telling the AI what to do, right. Giving it instructions, maybe giving it some context as well. Um, and then maybe even showing it, you know, or telling it how to do its job and then also maybe providing examples. Right. So the formula that we use is we start out with an objective, clear role and objective of what it's supposed to be doing. And then we give it some context about its role inside of either the automation or, um, you know, inside of the organization, just depending on what makes sense realistically. Uh, and then we give it instructions on how to do its job. Then we give it output requirements. So a lot of times with these tools, we need the output to be exactly formatted perfectly. And so we need to give it output requirements and then we give it tons of examples and examples are the key. Realistically, if you don't have examples, you're not really going to get as consistent output as you're looking for, right? If you need to rely on these agents, they're working inside your business. Um, you know, they start to have a lot of responsibility, right? You start to rely on them over time. You need, you need proper examples. And you need a strong prompt. So the objective, I know this is kind of small, um, but you'll, you'll get the doc anyway, but the objective is like define a clear and specific overall objective for the agent. The objective should be, uh, should succinctly describe the main task or the goal the agent needs to achieve. So example for this calendar one, your objective is to parse user input to identify and extract event related information specific to calendar operations. You must generate a JSON package with the correct parameters for each action, such as creating, updating, retrieving, and deleting calendar events. Your focus should be solely on event management tasks, ignoring unrelated instructions. So that makes it so, uh, so that like it's only focused on calendar actions. Like 
if you have a long prompt with multi steps and the agent has to do multiple different things, the tool itself is only looking at what its job is, right? Next thing is context. This uh, context. This section provides comprehensive background information to the agent, includes details about the user situation, relevant databases, and other information that can give the agent a better understanding of its role and specific scenario. The context helps a lot um, because it's it's a it's a point where you can really put the importance on what's being done, right? Like every time I have an agent run and I like it's it, it keeps outputting in all caps when I really want it to output in in you know lower caps. It's like, okay, you know, for some reason it's inconsistent at doing that. It missed that one line in the instruction to do that. But then I'll literally say like in all, in all caps in the prompt, like you must output in all caps, you know, and then all of a sudden it does it every time perfectly. Um, and then, well, and then I say, if you don't output in all caps, our entire business is ruined, you know, something super dramatic like that. Or I say, oh, if you don't output in all caps, this entire automation breaks, right? Something where the stakes are high, um, and when the AI reads it, it's reasoning like, oh, this is very important, right? I should take this seriously. Um, okay, next one, instructions. So this is just step-by-step -step instructions on exactly what it should be doing. So in this scenario for the calendar agent, first thing it needs to do is identify the calendar action. So just make sure that it can understand the user prompt and then uh, identify which action it needs to be, it needs to take, right? In this case, calendar. Um, or identify if there are any actions that need to be taken, which there shouldn't be, if the agent is calling this tool, there shouldn't be any actions that need to be taken, but uh, extract event information. So it's gotta get the information, right? To actually do the thing. Retrieve information from the database. So like emails, email addresses, right? Uh, and then generate a JSON uh, output. So it, it has to be in JSON because those are the inputs. Like if you saw the expressions there, the green, it's like th those are the the variables that are dynamically changing all the time uh, and they have to be inputted into the nodes that are actually uh, doing the thing right like the delete an email like that gmail node uh you know it's actually doing the thing and needs a specific like it would need the email id right um it has to be in json format output requirements so this section specifies what the agent should output once the work is completed it could be a json package a report or any other format that the user needs um, you know, typically this is just, it, it just depends on what the next step is, right? The AI is kind of just taking in the information, uh, you know, identifying what needs to happen and then outputting the data that the next step needs in order to, to finish the action. Right. I think that makes sense. And then examples. I mean, this one's obvious, just provide as many real world examples, um, as you can, right. And especially include edge cases that might happen. You don't have to account for every single possible scenario. I mean, that, that would defeat the entire purpose, right? Um, but definitely the more examples you add, the better results you're going to get overall. Um, and then this is just, I, I kept going with the example because it's, it's a long one. But in this case, you could see like the user input said, schedule a meeting with the team tomorrow at 10 a.m. The meeting should last one hour, include John and Sarah in the meeting. The first step the agent takes is identify the calendar action. It's like, okay, create an event, extract event information, extracted it, Retrieve information from the database, needs to uh, identify, verify John and Sarah's email, and then generate the JSON output, right? Easy as that. Okay, custom GPT. So I'm going to show the prompt template with the GPT and just how it all works, right? So this is going to be, uh, I'm going to put this link in the description so anybody can really view it and use it. Um, and then at the top here, it's like obviously an example prompt for calendar actions. Feel free to use the uh, GPT prompt generator to accelerate the process. Um, this is basically all of the, I, I, I basically put what was in the slides uh, on this doc here, a little bit more fleshed out. Like this is, this is like the exact prompt that we use for the calendar actions. So you could theoretically just copy and paste this. Um, and then obviously set up all the nodes that I had and you would have a calendar actions tool ready to go. You also need like the vector database. So I'd watch my last video about setting up a vector database. You need that um, and you need to put in your contacts and their email addresses in that database so it can work properly. Um, but this is the template. Let's go to the custom GPT generator. Um, I'm going to give it an example, like mm, give me a prompt for an AI node that will, um, 
execute email actions. We'll do that. So you can see it's giving us objective. It's giving us context. Primary job to manage and execute a series of actions, incoming emails, optimize email management. Obviously, you know, the better the prompt that you give it, the better the prompt that you're going to get, right? So you got to do your own little prompt engineering though. Um, but then it's going through like in, in its best way possible, right? It's giving you what you kind of want, just the structure for the prompt. I think some of the details that you need to add in here are crucial because it obviously doesn't have your details, but it's at least going to give you the, the um, outline. And then some of these information is pretty important. Like the objective probably doesn't need to be changed all that much unless you have specific instructions that you want it to, or specific uh, role that you want it to do. Um, you know, you want to list tools uh, as well. This is like, it's obviously using memory from what we've done in the past. Um, but you know, it might do that for y'all as well. Who knows? Uh, and then you have instructions and then you have output requirements, which this needs to be detailed a lot more, right? You're probably looking for a JSON output, um, instead of just, you know, bullet points like this. So just ensure that whatever's happening next, the AI node is actually outputting what needs to be outputted to be used in the next node, right? Um, and then obviously some examples here. So that's the custom GPT. I'm gonna add it to the, uh, I'm gonna add it to the description. Um, so anybody can access it. I'm also gonna add the Google doc as well. So if you just wanna uh, look it over, um, that's totally fine. I'm working on getting a discord set up um, and then I'm also working on just like a full blown course of how to build agents in general. And then, you know, probably a number of different agents that we built just showing you how to build those as well. Um, it's obviously taking a little bit of time, but we'll get it out to you as fast as possible. But yeah, super quick one today, prompt engineering. I think it makes a lot of sense. Really all you need is a template. Um, and then one step further, all you need is a, uh, custom GPT essentially. So yeah, that's pretty much it.